Hello, welcome and welcome back to the channel. Uh, first things first, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been so patient over the last couple of months uh, with the uh, house move. Uh, life uh, well and truly got in the way this time. But I'm back, hopefully you get the content back on the go more regular. So tonight I am going after the Rosette Nebula and I'm going to be using my new filter from Optolong, the Ellen Hans. And I'm going to be doing it from my new back garden location. So you're more than welcome to join me on my new chapter in my astral journey. Oh, ah, lovely day and lovely blue skies. And it is a bit chilly, uh, so I've got the jacket on here. So my last backyard was covered full of hurdles. It was just a bit of a nightmare for Imogen, to be honest. So what has actually changed? Well, first of all, the obvious bit more space. Got a, a nice sort of spacious astro back garden, shall we say, rather than a pokey backyard. With that also harder standing where my last backyard was covered in decking, so you had to be quite gentle when you were sort of walking around it. And also with the space comes a better field of view. The last backyard is hard to do like maybe multiple nights on some targets to get some half decent data. So yeah, it was 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 quite challenging. Um so I'm absolutely over the moon with what I've got now. Also with a field of view, I've now got a some sort of south view, so I can actually get the Orion constellation where in the last yard it, it was just a no-go, would never going to happen. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And if that wasn't enough, I have actually gone down nearly a whole bottle scale. My last backyard was the higher end of a bottle five, sort of going into a six, and it was really next to a highly illuminated town centre, about 100 metres away, where here, and I know it sort of looks sort of built up, but I'm actually quite near the countryside and it's starting to transition into a bottle four so it's the lower end of bottle five and it's quite evident with the naked eye a lot more stars um absolutely beautiful so yeah uh absolutely buzzing uh with with everything and um, hopefully it's it's going to improve the images and improve the image sessions in general I'm not going to get the rig out as yet i'm going to wait a few more hours for that one now what i'm do now is jump inside where it's a bit warmer talk a little bit about the rosette nebula and also talk about the new filter that i've got the optolong ellen hands the optolong ellen hands i've got the two inch round version and here she is it's already threaded into the uh, carrier tray for me uh the filter tray uh i best put that in in a second before i forget basically this filter is a dual narrowband filter it's got two main bands here uh, i'll just explain this if you are new to filters and you just see these sort of readouts so these two peaks if you like if you like uh, allow specific uh, emission lines in shall we say so this one the blue line is hydrogen beta this uh, the green is option three and then this one is hydrogen alpha and the, I'm trying to put this in simple terms, uh, range if you like, the, the sort of transmission range at the bottom here, that is 24 nanometers. And then this one's a little tighter at uh, 10 nanometers. So this is uh, classed as a tri-band filter. I'll compare this with my uh, quad-band filter from Skytech. So the transmission, uh, or these two peaks are, uh, not as tight as this, uh, the la uh, the area here is 35 nanometers a piece and it allows the sulfur 2 to be captured. As you can see on this graph, it's just outside. So apparently everything else around here, other wavelengths of light should be dismissed, including moonlight. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this fares up tonight because it is a 93% illuminated moon and it's quite close to target. So we'll, we'll see how it fares up. I really hope I have explained that okay, um, and it, it sort of made sense. So what we can do, well, move on to the target. What can I say about the Rosette Nebula? Well, it's quite close to the Orion constellation, and it's in the constellation Monoceros, uh, the uh, Unicorn. And there's a, a new general catalogue number of NGC, well, this is the Open Star Cluster that's still associated with it, in, uh, of 2244. There's also another one that I've picked up here, NGC 2237, which I believe denotes the whole nebulous region. And it lies about 5,200 light years from Earth. 
it always fascinates me when I talk about uh, distances. Oh, it's took like about 5,200 years to get here from this object. And let's put that in context. The Voyager probes, they are travelling at a speed of about 35,000 miles per hour. And it's going to take them about 40,000 years just to get two light years. Um, I think it highlights just, first of all, the sheer speed of light. Um, let's all agree it's stupidly fast. I don't know the exact um, speed of it. I'd have to look that up. Well, I think it ha also highlights the, the vastness of you know, not just only the, the solar system, the galaxy, but the whole universe. It's, it makes you wonder, as a species, will we ever actually leave the solar system? Uh, as always, fascinate me. Anyway, uh, this is what the field of view is going to look like through my 533 and the red cat. I'm quite looking forward to capturing this because it is a beauty. So I'm going to leave it there. Ah, it's going to be getting dark soon, so I'll be, I'll be setting up soon, uh, soon enough, I'm sure. So uh, I'll catch up with you all in a bit. dark pretty sharpish. <laughs> I left it a little late for my own personal taste to set up to be honest. I do like to do it during the day. I think it's a lot easier but you know, it's not always possible is it. Uh, well, I have set up for the most part. Yeah, a few odds and sods to do. Just want to double check everything, make sure everything's going to run smoothly. I have been having a few teething problems the other day. Uh, but you know, I'm sure it'll. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm <laughs> feeling optimistic tonight. Um, the skies are still clear, uh, so the forecast is still running true. Uh, target's not going to rise for another few hours yet. Um, rise over my neighbour's house and the tr big tree over here. Uh, around about half eight-ish. I'm just looking at the moon here as well. Um, I know it was going to be highly illuminated but wow that's that's bright be a good uh, like I said earlier it'll be a good test for this filter um, it's either gonna be a, a flop or a fail and you know who knows so I'm gonna leave it there for now I'll, I'll catch up with you later on in my image session maybe when I've got a few exposures in the bank and I'll let you know how it's all going for work to be honest um, to be honest my kids are going to be up in the next hour I reckon um, to get ready for school um, I've got the day off luckily so I'll be able to catch up on my sleep maybe just take some flats at the moment uh, finishing off I had a bit of fun earlier on in the evening while I was waiting for the target to come over the trees um, got a little bit of dirt around the Orion uh, Great Orion Nebula did have a few issues through the night and uh, midium flip never worked uh, I, I nearly actually I forgot to actually set it all up anyway so it was quite late when I set it up I didn't get a chance to uh, test it um, should have done it during the day but uh, trial and error never mind um, no doubt somehow I've put in wrong inputted uh, maybe uh, some sort of coordinate or a checked box I don't know I'll, I'll double check that later and other things was the connection but nothing to do with the setup really it was more to do I think uh, where I had my wireless hubs all situated in the house so I repositioned them and it seemed to work fine after that 
jump back in um, and I'll uh, run you through all these uh, all the explosives. So first things first, the uh, Great Nebula in Orion. Let's bring that up. I got ten exposures. Uh, this is one of one of them. Uh, three minute unguided exposures. I did. I've decided I'm going to do uh, a little project on this. I'm going to try and get at least twenty hours on it. I've never done that before, but I've got uh, time on my side. Uh, this is going to be visible till I think maybe end of February. Quite impressed with that. Uh, this is auto stretched, but some lovely, lovely detail in there. Really happy with that. So to the star of the show, the Rose Edna Nebula. So this is a four minute exposure. Well, I'm more than happy with that. I'm guided again. I don't uh, have a guide scope or a guide camera as yet. Stars don't look too bad. And it's a nice detail in there. So the settings I use gain of 100 watts, well, you say 101, an offset of 70. Um, I did have the uh, camera cooled to about 18 degrees, or minus 18 degrees even. And it uh, I had no problem getting down there, it was absolutely freezing. I'm not sure how much data I actually got. I would have definitely got more if I didn't have the little setbacks that I had. Uh, but, you know, it's the way it goes. So, hopefully, I can get this process sometime today. Um, and, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the image is going to turn out. Well, that just about wraps things up, I suppose. Well, I'm going to have to jump in and interrupt myself here. I totally forgot to let everyone know <laughs> what I thought of the filter. So, uh, a couple of nights have passed since... Uh, I captured the Rosette Nebula um, and um, just finished the session on M42 again, getting some more data on that. And uh, uh, again, highly illuminated moon, as you can see from this clip, and very close to the target. It's 97%, uh, so it's nearly a full moon. And here's one of the exposures. Not bad at all. I'm, I'm really impressed with this filter, and I, you know, I'm really looking forward to using it. Um, in the future, really am. Um, yeah, so big thumbs up. So yeah, that's a uh, quick what I think about it. <laughs> I'll let you uh, get back to the rest of the video. It's so nice to have this back up and running again. It has been a while. Um, same with the content. Um, hopefully I'm going to find the time to get more out uh, now I've settled in. It would be nice to have an image session with no dramas, but you know, to be honest, I was expecting some teething problems uh, having to strip the rig down to its bare nothing um, due to the house move and then bring it all back up. Uh, you know, I was expecting a few problems. And plus, I am still quite a novice when it comes to you know, using this sort of setup and using uh, Nina. Um, but you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is learning astrophotography. I'll no doubt be learning lots of stuff and I'll be continuing learning in like 10 15 years' time, uh, no doubt. So, hopefully, you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also find me on Instagram at cosmos underscore astrophotography. I like to share all my images there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. I know I'm not going to be everyone's taste. And on that note, please take care, everyone, and clear skies. Bye for now.